What's up guys, Zach from Wire Customs, and today I'm gonna to teach you the difference between the ABA and the 59 series flathead Ford motors. So today's episode is sponsored by The Flat Spot. Make sure you check them out at myflatheadford.com. It's a website that's dedicated to the preservation and education of flathead Fords. On that website, they got wiring diagrams, schematics, torque specs, everything you need to rebuild a flathead or just to learn the basic information. So make sure you check that webpage out, the link right here. Also check them out on Facebook at the Flat Spot the Flathead Support Group. The information in this video is actually from the Facebook page. I put up a post asking all the members to give me the difference between the APA and the 59. Bunch of information, a lot of good stuff that's gonna be included in this video, so make sure you check out the Facebook page as well. So in this video, we're gonna focus uh, solely on the 59s and the APAs, but I just wanna make sure it was clear that everyone knew that there was 24 stud motors before the 59. From 1938 to 1942, they had 24 stud motors. Before that, from 1932 to 1938, we had 21 stud motors. The biggest, easiest way to tell the difference is count the studs in the middle. If there's two studs, that's a 24 stud motor. If there's three studs in the middle, it's a 21 stud motor. If you have any questions about the motors that are not in this video, shoot them down in the comments. So there's a lot of information between the two engines. Let's go over the very, very basics first. So the water outlet on the head is right here in the middle, opposed to the front, and the distributor is on the very front of the engine opposed to a 90 degree angle up on the top, kind of near the head. So that makes this a 59. So let's go over the ABA and show you the difference. So on the ABA here, you can see that the water outlet is right here on the front of the head, opposed to the middle. And these are actually bolts opposed to studs. Uh, another big identifier on the ABA is the distributor up here on the side, like what I just stated. Now the 59 came first. The 59 was built from 1946 to 1948. The APA was built from 1949 to 1943 slash 1954, depending on where you were in the world. Now another big identifier that's really easy is the bell housing. If the engine's out of the vehicle, the 59 bell housing is integral. That means it's built as part of the block. It doesn't bolt on, it doesn't bolt off. Now that's only the upper half of the bell housing. The lower half of the bell housing is part of the oil pan. On an APA rather, they left the bell housing as a separate bolt-on feature so they could change transmissions a little bit easier. So the back of the APA does not have a bell housing on it. So one last solid identifier. The APA water pumps are different from the 59 water pumps. That's not to include the 8RT. So the APA water pump shown here is bolted to the frame way different than the 59 water pump. Then here shown is the 59 water pump bolt flat. It's flat to the frame, just like this. So a stock ABA also had the road draft tube on the front of the intake, opposed to the 59 that had the road draft tube uh, built into the fuel pump housing. So that's some of the easy dead giveaway differences between an ABA and a 59. So now let's go into some more specifics engine internals that are different. Um, the valves are mushroomed on a 59 and the valve guys were split. So after you take it apart, they come split like this. Now the ABA is a solid valve guide with a modern style valve with keepers. So what we have here is a 59 crank. How can I tell? Well, the biggest giveaway on this crank is the oiling for the rod journals. There's only one oil hole opposed to two, one for each rod journal. And another big dead giveaway is the oil seal on the back of the crank. This is what a 59 oil seal looks like. This is what an ABA oil seal looks like. So also let's check out what an ABA uh, crank looks like with oil passage for each rod journal. So another downfall on a 59 engine would be the floating rod bearings. There's one bearing on the crank for both rods. These are very expensive. They're similar to Babbitt's. Um, they're partially Babbitt's and they're just not as optimal as the APA style crank, the double hole oilers, and the individual rod bearing 
for each rod. So now we have an ABA head sitting next to a 59 head. You can see the major differences in the coolant passages on the head. The 59 has a lot of smaller holes and the ABA has a lot of larger holes around the outside of the head. So the ABA heads have much improved cooling. Now the center cooling ports on the 59 are similar to the ABA, but the ABA is just much larger. Then again on the front side, um, very similar except for the water outlet is in the front opposed to the middle. So all pre-1948 engines, they all have the same water jackets. These triangulated water jackets like this, um, that's a dead giveaway. Even the 21 studs with the three bolts, they still have the same shape water jackets. The ABAs that are very extremely desirable, they're all circle. Each one of these is circle, so that's a dead giveaway on the APA. So one last major difference on the 59 compared to the APA that I think was a huge upgrade was the oil pumps. Um, the 59 oil pumps had a straight cut spur type gear. Um, the ABA oil pumps had a new modern helical cut gear that worked a lot better with pressure and worked a lot better with wear and tear on the engine. So those are the really big difference between the 59 and ABA motors. Is there more than that? Yes, yes there is. Um, so feel free to comment away of something I missed. But I feel like these are the most important things, the biggest drastic differences. So let's test your knowledge of what you've been listening to in the video. Let's go outside and look at a car that doesn't have the heads on it, see if we can tell, identify what type of motor it is. All right, so here we have a 1942 Super Deluxe. Um, my suggestion to you is don't ever let the car determine what engine's in it. I've seen a lot of people make the mistake of it's this year car, so it has to have this year motor in it. It's not always the case. So here we have the distributor on the front of the engine, but we don't have any heads. Without the heads, how can we tell if it's a 59? So on a 59 block, the center passageways for the coolant are kind of like triangles and showing you here the center coolant passageways on an APA are circles. So now how do I identify if this is a 59 or pre-1945 motor? Is to be able to see the bell housing, which I can't see right now, and see if it has a 59 stamped on the top. If that 59 is there, it's a 59, no doubt about it. If there is no 59, it's most likely the pre-World War II flathead V8s. So there we go. Got some information, got some examples, got a little practice test at the end of the video. And as always guys, please like, subscribe to the channel, shoot me any comments, any questions, check me out on Instagram and Facebook at Wired Customs LLC. Thank you for watching.